Good morning, everybody. Um, good morning from the United Kingdom. Those of you who celebrate the Chinese New Year will definitely know it's Year of the Tiger. So the qualities of a tiger are competitiveness, self-confidence, brave, and someone with lots of willpower and strength. And those are exactly the qualities you need when managing your learning, your personal development, and your career in this mad and unpredictable world we now live in. So please take this session seriously this morning. Take notes, ask lots of questions in the chat box. I hope you can all see the chat box. Please have a look at it. Ask any questions you have in there and let's get started. My name's Andrew Rennie. I'm the sales director here at NCC Education and I'm joined by my two colleagues. We've got Tamsin Bell, our business development manager based in Cape Town, South Africa. Good morning, Tamsin. Good morning, and Andrew. Nice to have you here today. And we've got Dermot, Dermot Finnegan, who's our university partnership manager and who oversees our online top-up degrees. Good morning, Dermot. Good morning, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, it's our pleasure. We're here to talk about our two online top-up degrees. These are both honours degrees awarded by a UK Quality Assured University. And this presentation is aimed at level five students, students who have completed two years of a degree or HND and are seeking a recognisable global degree which will open doors into a fascinating, lucrative and long term career in IT. Next slide, please. So this is the company's mantra. We want you to be inspired and grow through education. And IT education is something we've been a part of for the last 55 years. Since our conception, we've always been involved in preparing learners for the workplace in the field of IT and computing. Next slide. So a UK bachelor's degree with honours is made up of 360 credits. That's 120 credits per year. So these two qualifications are BSc Honours, Business Computing and Information Systems and Cybersecurity and Networking, are concerned with the last year of a UK degree or 120 credits. The Business Computing and Information Systems provides a blend of IT and business skills, opening up a range of IT specialist careers. Whilst the cybersecurity and networking, which is our new top-up degree starting this spring, will equip students to take part in the design, implementation, management, and security of a modern computer system. These are what's classed as a validated uh, and awarded, th these are what's classed as a validated degree. So they're awarded and validated by the University of Central Lancashire, and they're taught by academics of NCC education. They're also taught 100% online and assessed remotely. So they're assessed by assignments and a project. So there's no examinations. Typically, we accept students from the NCC level four and level five diplomas, but we also have lots of other entry qualifications and we'll talk about those shortly. Next slide. This is probably the most important slide. It's preparing you for the workplace. IT careers are among the highest paying sectors in today's workplace economy. In the US, for example, somebody who graduates with a software developer's uh, with a career in software development is expected to achieve a salary of 110,000 US dollars. Somebody who goes into networking and computer systems administration, $84,000 a year, and database administration, $98,000. These are average salaries, but the average IT professional in the US at the moment earns around 86,000 US dollars, incredible amounts of money. So here in the new information age, practically everything we do is connected by both a PC, but also computer science and information technology skills. 
So business, commerce, communication, healthcare, science, engineering, everything from finding a job to finding a soulmate is being revolutionized through the wonders of IT. Both culturally and economically, advanced IT is the driving force on a global scale. With every device and increased security, it is not surprising an IT career landscape is expanding rapidly for everyone. In the UK, they reckon or they forecast 10,000 vacancies are available at the moment in the areas of cyber security. So there's a shortfall of 10,000 people to fill vacancies in cyber security. Also in the UK, the top vacancies at the moment where there's a shortage are in cybersecurity, blockchain, artificial, artificial intelligence, data science, and cloud computing, just to name a few. I mentioned at the beginning the launch of our new cybersecurity and networking degree. And this degree alone will, su will support students who are seeking careers in security, uh, being a security analyst, security engineer, and security specialist. Also, database engineering, systems analyst and systems designer, just a few of the professions we will prepare people for through these two top up degrees. Here are just a few examples as to where an IT degree can take you. Can the next slide, please? Tamsin. So just a little bit about this program. It was launched in 2013 with the University of Central Lancaster. Um, on the last count, we had over 700 graduates. And these graduates are really a testament to the footprint of NCC education. We've got, we've got learner, or we've had learners from across Europe, Poland, Germany, Malta, Serbia, um, the Marshall Islands, Australia, all across the Middle East, Asia, Myanmar, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong, and all across Africa. This is really a modern global qualification for an international workforce. So providing opportunities, and the great thing with IT is that these opportunities are global and the skills are global. So there's no, there's no difference between uh, the type of skills needed in Asia, or the UK or the US, they're the same skills. And that's why this is such a great qualification. It travels across boundaries, geographical boundaries, and it really is a springboard into an IT career. Can I have the next slide, please? Thompson. So, starting with the presentation, it's important to look at the entry qualifications. And here are just a few of the entry qualifications we consider for these two top up degrees. From Pearson's or also known or used to be known as edXL, uh, the HND qualifications in computing, computer, computing and systems development with networking uh, and also network engineer. There's, there's been many HND qualifications in the past, and if yours isn't mentioned here, please do approach the team and we'll check for you. More than likely, we'll accept you onto the programme. Uh, the BCS, which is the British Computing Society, um, they've had a number of different diplomas, and they may come up, various organisations have merged with them, so if you're not sure, again, please contact us, because I'm sure... Um, there will be a possibility of you coming onto the program. ATHE, Informatics, or that's Informatics Academy in Singapore. They've had various institutions around the world which have offered their advanced diploma in computing. We accept those. OTHM, Qualify, and SQA, the Scottish Qualification Authority, who again have their own HND, Higher National Diploma qualification, which we also consider. So, if your qualification's on there, you should be able to go straight on to our top up programme. If it's not mentioned there, please come and talk to us. We'll have a look at the programme. And if it's equivalent to a level five and it meets um, that there's a comparable uh, 
uh, curriculum to these qualifications, uh, more than likely we'll, we'll let you onto the program. OK, so there should be no problem. But it's always worth asking if you're not sure. Tamsin, can I pass it over to you now? Yes, thank you, Andrew. There might be, well, there probably are quite a few students on the call this morning, this afternoon, wherever you are in the world, that's wondering why should you choose this program? What benefit does it have for you? Uh, well, I can tell you now that you can obviously top up if you have an existing NCC Level 5 Diploma in Computing um, or Computing with Business. You can obviously then be able to top up this diploma to a full UK degree. And it's very flexible. So the wonderful thing about this program is that you are able to study online and you can fit this into your lifestyle. There might be some of you on the call today that work full time and you might think to yourself, now how am I able to complete a final year and end up with a degree while still working? Well, this qualification and the way it's delivered is going to allow you to be able to do that. It's extremely flexible, fitting into your lifestyle and affordable for you and very accessible. And Dermot will be going into a bit about that later on, explaining to you a little bit more about the virtual learning environment. So the program is actually delivered by NCC Education and how that's done is through our, as I've mentioned to you earlier, our virtual learning environment, which Dermot is going to explain to you a little bit about later. As I've mentioned to you, you can study at your own pace. And the wonderful thing is that you can actually study this qualification from your own home country. So you don't have to worry about occurring any extra costs with having to travel to the UK. Um, you can actually just continue to study anywhere in the world in your home country. And you're awarded a UK university degree as if you were physically going to the University of Central Lancashire yourself. The amazing thing about this program is that all teaching staff are UK based academics. So you're going to be taught by the best, which is so important for you as a student. And the University of Lancashire is ranked within the top 7% of all universities in the world. So you really are getting a top notch qualification behind your name. You might ask who are you going to be taught by? And you would probably think you'd love to know a little bit more about the module leaders. So I'm going to just briefly go through some of them here. As you can see, not only do they have really good credentials, so they have a wealth of academic experience, but they also have practical experience as well, which is so important. So you can see the top uh, module leader here, Maxine, um, for e-business. She completed her MBA at the University of Bolton. And um, since 2010, she's actually been designing and developing online uh, learning at universities in the UK. So you can already see the experience that she would bring to the table for you as a student. Then we have Stuart Hutchinson, um, who is responsible for the Corporate Communication Systems Management module. And Stuart completed his BSc in Computer Science at the University of Manchester and has been the senior lecturer at Birmingham City University for over a decade. So again, coming with a lot of experience. Then we have Gary. Um, and he was he's a senior lecturer at London Metropolitan University and he's currently an IT lecturer at Redbridge College. And he's got quite a lot of experience on the more databases side and system security. So again, you can see the difference. And I would say together, if you look at all these module leaders, they've all got a bit of experience in different aspects of the IT and business world which really would assist you in your studies and learning and gaining invaluable insight from them. Steve has got his uh, PhD in um, information retrieval, IR, and is currently a lecturer at the University of Huddersfield, and he's responsible for the information systems project uh, module. And then we have Shane McMordy, um, who focuses on the managing information systems projects module. And Shane's actually completed an MBA at the University of Durham with over 10 years experience of um, designing and delivering online at the university level. I'm going to hand over to Dermot, who is head of our partnerships at 
NCC Education to just tell you a little bit more about the program breakdown of the qualification. Thank Dermot. you, Tamsin. Thank you. Hi, good morning. Um, so yeah, the we have two intakes a year on this top up. So like Andrew and Tamsin said, students typically do the NCC level four and level five uh, at our accredited partner centres, and then they move on to online study um, via our platform. So there's two intakes each year, um, and we, we refer to them as sort of autumn and spring in the UK, but that would be the first intake would be sort of March, April time, and students typically study for 16 weeks. They have a break and then they join their second semester, which is autumn time, which is around about August, August, September. Um, so, so yeah, the, the full time programme is, is two 16 week semesters. And the way it works is that students will study two modules each semester. And we have a, a 40 credit project module, which is split across both semesters. So that's quite a big, a big project module that the students uh, submit really, really impressive work on. And each module, so in total on the programme, you'll study five modules. Um, you've got two in semester one, two modules in semester two, and then the project module, which is overarching both semesters. And yeah, every module has weekly video lectures, uh, tutorial exercises, discussion forums, and we do offer uh, synchronous live sessions. So it's not a case of giving you access to a platform and saying good luck. You get a lot of support on the program. And every single week, for every single module that you study, you will get a live lecture from a UK academic. Now, a lot of our students, they do work. Some of them work full time, some of them work part time. Uh, you know, obviously we've all got responsibilities outside of work as well. So if you aren't able to make those live sessions, they're all recorded and available on a platform for you. Um, so yeah, typically a student will go through video lectures and um, then they'll go through the tutorial exercises, which, which are not assessed. It's just to, to, to guide your learning. And then there's some discussion forums on the platform which which encourage interaction with the students. They're not really monitored as such, but, but typically a module leader will, will post a question on a weekly basis just to encourage students to interact and, and share resources and things of that nature. And then once you've done that, you're probably ready for your live chat. You've probably got some questions after all the reading you've done, and then you have your live session with your module leader. Thanks, Tamsin. I think okay, so I think. Sorry, I jumped in there. I don't know if you want to carry on speaking about this so long. Sorry about that. No, no, it's okay. I was just going to say, we, I'm actually going to show you the, the VLE platform later on. So Tamsin, do you want to wait to the yeah. end of the presentation? I'll spend about five minutes and I'll just go through some of the key bits of the virtual learning environment. So, so yeah, thanks Tamsin. Okay, great. Thanks, Dermot. Dermot, if you wouldn't mind just going through the assessments um, with yeah. the students, please, on the call, that would be wonderful. Thanks. So we've got some really rigorous quality assurance processes around assessment. So, so all our module leaders, the people that teach you, the people that deliver the program, they produce the assessment as well. Uh, and what they do is they produce the assessment, and they give it to NCC Education, and, and we carry out a check. That's the first check. It goes to our product development, they carry out a second check. It goes to the university and they carry out a third check and then it goes to an external examiner and they carry out a fourth check. So we just want to make sure that the assessment is sufficiently challenging, it's rigorous and it's not duplicated in any way. So we have a good, really good high quality quality assurance process on, on the assessment. Um, we used to have physical exams, so people used to go into big halls, big schools and used to sit down and do two hour exams. Um, obviously, for an online programme, we wanted to open up and make it as, as flexible and accessible for everybody. So it was actually just before COVID and then COVID accelerated that change, but we moved all of the assessments to 100% to online. So you'll see the first four modules there, database management, corporate communication, e-business and managing information systems. They're all 100% assignment only and it's 60%, 40%. So the way it works, Tamsin, is um, the, the assignment, the 40%, is due, I think it's in week eight from memory. So I think after a few weeks, we made the assessment available to students. And the, I think it's week three, actually, we made the assessment available to students. And then they've got five weeks to work on that piece of assessment. And then they submit on the platform in, in week eight. And then the second component, 60%, is a timed constrained assignment. So we're looking to replicate those exam conditions. 
And what will happen is um, we will upload the assessment. Everyone will get an announcement to say the assessment is now available for students. Students will download that, that piece of work and they have 48 hours, yeah, two days, 48 hours to complete that piece of work and then re-upload uh, to the platform. So that's how it works. The 40% assignment is, is five weeks, available week three and during week eight. And then the second piece of work is due at the end of the semester and that's 60% and that's what we call time constrained. So that's 48 hours and it's all online. Uh, the information systems project is a little bit different and there's three components uh, in that in that 40 credit module. Again, it's all it's all online assessment. The way it works is um, students will submit an initial proposal, which is worth 10 percent and they get feedback on the proposal, very comprehensive feedback from the module leader. And that's just to, to guide them to make sure they're on the right track with that project. They submit a second piece of assessment. Um, which is worth around 25%, and that's the end of semester one. You've, you've submitted two components, initial proposal, interim report, you've got sufficient feedback, and then the second semester on your project module, you, you don't have any delivery and you work on your final project, which is a really big piece of work. It's around six, 7,000 words, and that's worth around 65%. So semester one on the project, two components, you get your feedback, you move on to semester two where you work on that final project by yourself. Thanks, Tamsin. Thanks, Dermot. I think what I'll do now is I'll just explain to you with regards to the degree classification. So just so you understand when you obviously pass and you complete your degree, um, what type of pass will you receive? So in the UK, first class honours pa um, pass is 70% or higher. A second, sorry, an upper second class honours is 60 to 70 percent. A lower second class honours is 50 to 60 percent. And then the third class honours is 40 to 50 percent. Um, otherwise, you would then get an ordinary degree pass. Um, and then if you didn't pass, obviously you would not pass, it would be a fail and you wouldn't then be awarded the degree. But you can then see the different classifications here and the what you could aspire towards as a student. These are just copies. I know a lot of students have asked some of the centers as well if they could see what a transcript would look like or an actual copy of a sample degree certificate. So you will see here, here is a um, sample of a degree certificate and a transcript for you to view. So I think the exciting thing here is, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Dermot, but this is exactly the same um, degree certificate you would get as if you were physically going to the University of Central Lancashire. So it's something exactly really, the same. Exactly the yeah. same. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't mention NCC education. It doesn't mention online. It's exactly the same as as an on-campus student would get in the UK. Yeah. I mean that's quite amazing for you as a student, and something that you can really hold with pride, especially when looking to gain future employment and for your own self personal achievements to put up maybe on your wall one day. I think for me, this is extremely exciting and something that we're proud of. Um, other students that have actually gone through this program have really excelled. Um, first of all, they have the opportunity to have really excellent teachers, resources and support. And this just gives you a glimpse at some of the recent results. Um, if we looked at back to, at the past July 2020 assessment board, you can actually see here that almost one quarter received a first class honours pa uh, pass and 72% of students received a 2-1 or above. So as I mentioned to you before, a 2-1 is approximately between 60 and 70% um, and first class is 70% and above. So that's really, really great. So you can see how well these students have done. This is just a photograph for you all to have a look. Obviously, prior to COVID, um, students actually had the opportunity to, att to attend the graduation ceremony in the UK. And I know Dermot has attended a few graduation ceremonies in the past before COVID hit, and I'm sure he can agree that it's an amazing experience for you as a student. Obviously, um, since the pandemic has hit us, the graduation ceremonies, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, you have been online, uh, Dermot. But hopefully, you know, if all things go well, we could start moving again back to a face to face ceremony, which I think is a real milestone for for a, for a graduate after completing yes. the qualification. 
I've, I've seen some UK universities, some of our partners recently have, have had face to face graduation ceremonies, which has been really nice to see. But but yeah, my colleague Claire Watkins and I, we get to know the students very, very well that they study on the programme. And actually, it's been really nice having met them online to, to meet them face to face. And, you know, some of the students, the graduates rather, they, they bring their families over. They spend a few days in the UK and they go up on stage and collect their certificate from the head of the school. And it's it's a great, it's a great, it's a great occasion. So it's something that we really enjoy and we would hope to see them again soon. Thanks, Tamsin. Yeah. Thanks, Dermot. These are just a few comments um, from some of our students that have studied the program that I thought I would share with you today. So um, basically you can see that the lectures can make a difficult situation quite easy. Um, and even though you're actually going to be studying the class, uh, sorry, you're going to be studying the qualification online, they really make you feel like as if you're physically in a classroom um, through the many interactions through technology nowadays. And obviously, as I've mentioned to you before, it's time saving for you as a student, easy attend to, to attend to from home. And um, the fact that the flexibility align live chats for you to be able to speak and converse and communicate with your lecturers if you have an issue or problem, um, as well as the response time from the NCC education support team is really amazing. It just gives you that extra backup which you need as a student when studying a program and especially a top up final, your final um, qualification, which is going to be your degree um, from home. This is just one of our students, Diana, um, who actually completed her BSc Business Computing and Information Systems top up degree um, and is now working. She's actually one of our student ambassadors. Um, so there's also an opportunity for you actually to become a student ambassador, which is quite exciting. So um, if any of you do complete this program and are, and are interested in getting involved, please do speak to us afterwards. She actually graduated with the first class honours degree and she was extremely impressed with the high standard. Um, and again, she found this program extremely flexible and affordable, which could fit into her commitment that she had. And she's doing very well for herself at this moment in time. I'm hoping to share a clip. Unfortunately, um, we couldn't actually play that th this afternoon, but I'm going to be sharing with you a clip we're working on from her, um, which I can share with all of you, just about her experiences of the program um, and how she found it. So I'm hoping to get that through to you all soon for those that are interested. Then we have um, one of our students who's also um, a student ambassador, Nian, hopefully I'm saying the name correctly here, Nian Kwa Hiet. Um, and he basically found not, not just from the academic side, but also the knowledge that he was filled with after completing the, the qualification, especially looking at the project method project management methodologies. Um, he really enjoyed that. And again, how he could study at his own pace via the VLE, the, which is our virtual learning environment, and you know, ending up graduating with a British degree at home, still studying in his own country was a real benefit to him. I'm going to hand over to Andrew now. He's just going to speak about some or one of our latest additions, uh, which is our new top up, the BSc Honours in Cybersecurity and Networking, um, which we've launched this year. So, Andrew, would you be able to explain to everybody a little mm -hmm. bit more about this? Yes, thank you, Tamsin. Um, we're all really looking forward to this next intake taking place in March because it launches our newest top up degree. Um, which has been about two years in the making. It's very exciting and very apt at this moment. You know, the skills we're providing in cybersecurity and networking are really what the market is seeking at this moment. But it's also a bit of a change for NCC. It's also a collaboration with not only the University of Central Lancashire, but also with CompTIA and Immersive Labs, um, which is something we've not done before. But we think what we're doing is providing the students the experience and the exposure to other aspects of the IT market, which will help definitely with employability uh, and job search skills. Can I move on to the next slide, please, Tamsin? So earlier on, we went through the structure of uh, 
Computing and Information Systems degree. And this is very similar to the Cybersecurity and Network in Topper degree. It consists of five units, um, the same weighting as the other, uh, our previous top up degree, which is also on offer, but with the exception of two units. Uh, the cloud and virtualization security and the cyber security management. So everything else is identical. It's all tried and tested, and it's something we've offered uh, previously, but we've introduced these two new units, which really, um, I notice people are still uh, coming into the session, which is great. Um, just for just for your own information, we're recording this session. So if uh, unfortunately you, you've arrived late, you know, we'll send out a link and you can watch the full session in your own time. Or you can go back and watch it anyway if you feel as though it's something you've missed. We also have uh, a chat column and thank you for those who have entered uh, your questions and we'll be happy to answer those now or at the end of the session. Uh, whatever they may be. So here are the, the core units for the cybersecurity and networking top up degree. If you want a bit more information about those, um, what they aim to do, the content, please have a look on our website. So if you go to our program pages on the website, you'll see a box that says degrees and you can see information about the two top up degrees. Um, quite a lot of information about this and there's also a flyer as well and it will give you detailed details about each of these units um, and the knowledge and skills they will provide to you. Tamsin can I can we move on? So here's a bit more information um, about these. So NCC has partnered with Immersive Labs to offer students the opportunity to gain hands-on experience in tackling cybersecurity challenges using a cloud-based platform. This will be utilized by the module leaders to offer a greater depth of understanding to cybersecurity challenges faced by organizations. And we're also working with CompTIA. So CompTIA, the Computing Technology Industry Association, is an American nonprofit trade organization probably one of the top in the sector, very well known, established in 1982. And this association will help you stand apart when applying for IT jobs. Uh, and it will certainly make you stand uh, a step away and a step above all your peers. Because what we're doing is that we're offering all, all our students who complete this new pathway an option to take uh, the CompTIA Cloud Plus or the CY SA Plus exams. So you have the choice of one or the other. Um, this course will provide uh, some of the knowledge you need to be able to pass those. It's aligned very closely to those two qualifications. So in theory, once you pass the degree, uh, so you'll have a British degree and you'll have one of these two qualifications if you take up the offer of uh, no additional cost. The cost is included in the degree. So, you know, I think this is a great offer. So you get an, an academic university degree. You get experience from immersive labs. Uh, so there's that practical experience and some industry work ready qualifications through CompTIA. Um, a brilliant package. Um, which will help you find your first employment in this sector and hopefully uh, get you on the IT ladder. Next slide, please. So before we go over to any questions, I'm going to pass you back to Dermot, who's going to give you a, a bit more information about the uh, learning management system, our VLE. Um, have a look at it, please. It's good to see some questions coming up. You know, just going back to some of the things Tamsin was talking about, you know, we have a fantastic su success rate. You know, looking at those stats, what is it? 70% of our students get either a first or two one, uh, which is a brilliant outcome. And you don't see that in many universities. So great outcome there. Um, and so please listen closely, have a look and see what Dermot's offering. You know, this is the platform. This is the classroom we'll be learning. Over to you, Dermot. Thanks, thanks, Andrew, and thank you, Tamsin. It's just to um, say as well, reassessment is probably something we didn't touch on there. 
it's just important to say that all students do get given opportunities at reassessment on the programme as well. So just in case they were concerned about that. But this is the, there's lots of questions coming in, Andrew, as well. I've tried my best to, to answer all of them. Um, a lot of questions there on registration, on deadlines. Um, I think it's best that the people are coming from the centre network contact their business development manager or contact the customer support team for up-to-date guidance on the administration, on pricing, on a deadline. So there's lots of different yeah. people here. So we just, I would contact your business development manager or, or customer support executive to get to get up-to-date guidance on, on fees, on instalments, on, on deadlines and administration. So um, I can't answer all those questions, I'm afraid. But no, here's no, the, here's no, don't worry, don't worry. We'll deal with those at the end. Um, Thanks. So just, just I'm going to flick through this, Andrew, for, for five minutes. We have invested a lot of time and a lot of money into this platform. Um, and this is the BSC on Business and Computing Information Systems main page. So this is what students see. Um, now, it's important to understand that students have been studying in a classroom environment with a teacher, with, with textbooks at level four and level five. So, you know, there is a there is a shift in learning here and there is a transition. So it's, it's important that students all spend a lot of time on the platform and look at all the information that's there um, and the best place to start would be the orientation section so if i if i click into here it will open up a, a brand new page for us and there's a very very comprehensive um, section here so you get a full welcome you get a, a full guidance on how you will learn the student journey so i'll just i'll just click in and just show you guys an example yeah so every single module you have a, an introductory video from your module leader each week a new video lecture is, is loaded. It goes through information on the tutorials and there's small quizzes at the end just to help guide your learning. Discussion forums we went through them before, not assessed, but just to just to encourage people to engage with their with their peers on the platform. And then we move to live chat chat sessions. So it's important that everyone goes through this orientation first. And this, this remains here. You can see your student journey um, to be a full a full outline of the topics of the modules. There's a reading week just before assessment is due. So you have week seven just to help just to give you some time. There's no live chat session last week just just to help you prepare for for the assignment submission. And then weeks to eight to 13. Weeks 14 to 15, so towards the end of the semester, that's when the time constraint assignments will be made available. So it's very, very clear. All the information on the assessment is here as well. So so it's a good, good, good idea just to come back here and check and do some further reading if, you've, if you're not sure. There's full guidance on how to submit an assignment and an outline of um, some techniques actually, presentation techniques um, just to help students at every step of the way. And there's some generic information. So level six is the final year of degree pathway. It's very important that students have a good understanding of referencing and plagiarism and we provide lots of information for them to help them through the course. There's a full presentation here for students. So once you've been through this, you know, we'll give you a little check, a little quiz. You know, you should make sure you've received your username and password. You completed the online enrollment process. So there's a few questions there that just means that, yes, I've done the orientation and yes, I'm, I'm ready to um, begin studying. So we can close this page. We'll move back to the, to the main course page. So that's the orientation section. Um, there's who's who information here. It's got everyone's details, the program manager's um, details for up-to-date support. Um, there's, there's, we've run a series of, of webinars and masterclasses as well. So we run one recently, uh, recently out in June, wow, um, on the range and scope of information systems. So everything that we run, uh, we record and we make sure it's available on the platform for students. And during times, and it's important to say that we've, we've just been offering more informal drop-ins as well. So not academic sessions, just, just drop-in sessions at you know, regular intervals throughout the semester, just to check in with students, meet the students, see how they're doing, and just have a general chat about, about their studies. And that's been really well attended. It's been quite useful. Um, lots of questions on assessment. So if we go into additional materials here, um, you can see assignment, guidance and support, presentation requirements, bibliographies, statement confirmation of work details. You've got all the timetables that you need. So where are we now? We're in January 2022. So autumn 2021 is, is just finished. And you can see you've got the timetables there, the reassessment timetables, time constraint assignment timetables. 
if Thingate is there for next semester as well. So the next semester will be spring 2022. Everything is there already. We've got the student handbook, which is very, very comprehensive and, and full reading lists for all students. Now I'll just show you the past papers as well. Past papers are here. Here you go, a few questions on here. So you can see module by module, ADMS is the Advanced Database Management, Corporate Communication, e-business, information systems projects. You know, it's very, very comprehensive. So as a student, Andrew, you would come on, do your orientation, and you go through all the past papers, and we can really set your expectation early on around the level of work that we expect from our students, which I think is important at level six. Yeah, um, that's really helpful, Dermot. I, I think it, it's worth noting, and just looking at the questions about assessments, I, I think there needs to be a bit of caution from the students that, you know, we will provide all the skills and knowledge they need to complete these assessments and attempt them. So it can be quite daunting looking at these assessments when you haven't completed the course. So I, I would say just be a, a little bit, uh, uh, not, not wary, but just think that, you know, sometimes looking at the assessments can put people off. That shouldn't be the case. We're going to, it's a very structured course. Um, and we have an orientation at the beginning, which will prepare you in terms of giving you the study skills and learning you need to be able to, to, be able to tackle this curriculum, which will prepare you to take these assessments and pass them successfully. So, you know, just think that we will give you that knowledge to be able to tackle these assessments. So, so please don't judge the program on the assessments and sometimes um, that can lead you down the wrong path. It's not, and you shouldn't be looking at the program with the easiest assessments or the ones you can tackle now. Um, you know, it's the skills you're after and that's why you're doing this. So we can provide you with the skills and knowledge so you're you're equipped and armed to go out into the IT industry. So it's I think that's exactly, yeah. We're done for that's exactly reason. what we've done. Yeah, we've, we've geared the assessment and the learning outcomes directly towards the needs of industry at the moment. So, you know, the, this, this program we're talking about today is, is information systems and IT put in a business context, which, you know, the skills that the students learn are very, very transferable. And the cybersecurity program, which we're about to launch, is, is, is directly based on the skills gaps. We've got a huge skills gap in the UK and globally when it comes to cloud and virtualization and cybersecurity management. So those skills are needed by, by employers. And we can demonstrate this is a very skills-based course. And um, this is the business module just to show you, you know, this is uh, just to look at, we looked at a program page level before. I just wanted to show you on a, on a, on a module level as well. If we go into the business module, it's very comprehensive, Andrew, everything's here. We've got the announcements. So when the announcement is made, all the students do get an email into their inbox just to make them aware that something has been said and they can click through onto the platform. And topic one, e-business and commerce, you click into the lesson, you watch all the slides, you make your notes, you go through to the discussion forum, you can see there's a question here that's been, that's been posted, and then you move forward to the live chat. Uh, topic two, objectives and strategy, you have your lesson, discussion forum, and your live chat. And it goes through like this, Andrew, and at the very bottom, I think we'll have an assessment area. So yeah, an assessment area here, which is very clear. These are the dates that assessment is due. You can see the submission right here was, was, was 64 out of 75 students submitted some work. And um, we have a late folder as well. So we can see further five students there submitted work. It was late, um, but yeah, that's just a quick overview, Andrew. So we've looked at the program page, we've looked at the orientation, we've looked at the past papers. You can see the assessment area. Uh, I think that should be a, a good amount of information for everybody. Yeah. I do, but I just wanted to ask, I had a question from a student before who was asking about, say, for example, they're working um, so they can only access the VLE at night or whatever the case might be. Um, I just wanted to, you to just maybe um, elaborate on that, that they won't miss out that with regards to the lectures, they'd then be able to actually go in and re-watch them. Just maybe if you could explain a little bit about that um, to the students on the call today. Yeah, sure. That's 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 quite normal, Tamsin. I think we we, we do. Um, I'm just going to stop share so I can concentrate on what I'm doing. Um, we do graduate surveys and student surveys every semester. So we ask the students. We try and understand how they study, how many hours a week they study, what devices do they use, do they work, what's their situation, and 
yeah, this, the information we get back is a large percentage of students do work, particularly on a part-time basis. And of course, we've got family responsibilities as well. So it's very common for the students to, to work. They study full-time actually, um, but, but they sort of work in part-time. They're balancing lots of different things and not everybody can, can make the live chats. So yeah, they're all recorded. They're all there and they don't go anywhere. So now if we move into spring 2022, you can go back. You can go back and go back to the previous semester. Everything's going to be there for students. They have full access to all the modules that they're registered for. And, and those live chats don't go anywhere. They're, they're all recorded and they will stay there. Yeah. Great. And would it be possible? I know we normally say about it takes about two, if I'm not mistaken, two to a little bit longer years to complete it part time. Is it possible for us to, I mean, have we had any students that have completed it part time in about one and a half years? Is that possible at all? Uh, no, it's not. No. So all I would say is that sometimes students come onto the program and they say, right, I'm going to I'm going to go as fast as I can. I'm going to do all my work. But no, we, we don't let students go through the program as fast as they can. We have to go week by week and step by step. So the assignment submission deadlines, they're, they're, they're the same for everybody. And we work to program assessment boards at the university. So we mark all of the work, we present it to the university. And the university will check everything. They check the samples of work, they check the feedback that we give students is appropriate, they check our marking and moderation. And so everything is, is aligned to university assessment boards. So you have to work within them parameters. But times in some people come in and they, they try to go quickly and they realize that actually this is a very serious course. It's, there's a lot of assessment here. It's, it's not to be taken lightly. It's a level six program. Um, and they said, you know what? I need to switch to part time. And that's OK as well. That's possible. As long as it's early enough in the course, let's say in the first four to six weeks, you realize that actually you've taken on too much work. You want to, to move to a part time pathway. We, we can help you with that. And it's very often as well. Things happen in life. You know, circumstances change. Things come up. We all know what it's like. Um, and Claire provides fantastic support. Claire Watkins is, is a program manager. She has a very good relationship with all of the students and she can have a chat. She can work with them if, if students need to defer if they need to take a break um, we have a very good relationship with the university like Andrew said we've been doing this for, for 2013 so how many years is that now <laughs> it's getting on it's getting on for 10 years so you know we've been doing this a very long time and we're here to support students we want them to succeed we, we recruit people that deliver high quality provision we have good quality assessment and provide lots of synchronous learning and lots of good support so yeah it's it's well established and we can help students regardless of their circumstance. It shouldn't be an issue. So some great questions there, Tamsin. And you know, just you know, some of the questions which are coming up in the chat. I, you know, can, can I suggest go back to the beginning of the video, uh, the presentation today when we're finished, and have a look at it again. You know, this is a, a tried and tested model. It's a very structured program, as Dermot was saying. You can take it full time over one year or you can take it part time over two years and it, it is challenging uh, but it's structured and it's not something uh, you know someone's asking online is it is it self-study um, no it's not self-study you know this is a, a live tour on program but it does have some flexibility you know we we i said at the beginning we had students from all across the world and Students will log in. They will see the chat sessions. They will see see the uh, the lectures, which are recorded, so you can watch them and, and watch them again in your own time. So you manage it around your day, uh, whatever time zone that may be. But uh, you know, I think we, in terms of terminology, we have to be quite careful here. You know, on all degrees, there is a a high degree of self-study. Yes, you've got to go away and learn the principles and the methodologies and the uh, all the information you've been you've been given. You've got to go and learn and understand it. And so, yes, you've got to do that on your own, um, or you can do it with your your colleagues and peers. But you know, this is typically what you'll find in any university degree. And in fact. It's probably very similar to many on campus degrees now where look, there's restrictions on students going into universities. So the difference is that we've been doing this for a long time. All the contact, all the support is there. 
Um, it works, it works very well, and students do fantastically well with the results. You know, you've seen that on paper. Um, as Tamsin was saying, uh, you know, this degree certificate is the same as any certificate given to a UK student that goes to the UCLan campus uh, up here in Preston. Um, you know, it's a, it's a cutting edge campus with all the facilities you would expect, but it's the same qualification. And what we've done is we've, we've put it online. You know, there's, there's no deficiency. You're not missing out on any lectures at all. You know, if anything, we we probably give you a, a lot more support. Uh, yeah. So please, go on, go on, Dermot. Just in terms of next steps, Andrew, I think, you know, we're seeing more students take us up on our on our postgraduate routes as well. So some students who want to continue and get and get an MSc qualification, um, they have options. So so we work with the University of Central Lancashire and they offer some scholarships to students that have graduated from NCC. So if you're a graduate from us, you come to us, you're, you're one of our students, we can work with the university to, to help you with your registration and, and application for, for postgrad study on campus. Um, in the UK, if that's something that you want to do. If you did want to study online for an MSc, that's a route we can also offer with another partner of ours, which is London London Metropolitan University. So, so we do offer further study uh, in, in postgrad all the way to, to an MSc level. And you can do that on campus in the UK, or you can do that fully online. So if you're interested in postgrad study, please check our website, there's some information on there. We've got some, some good options for students. We try to cater for everyone, Andrew. We know some regions, yeah, they like to go to the UK. Some some are working, so we're trying to cater for everybody here. So we, we do have some good options and we try to add to them all, to, all the time. Thank you. Thanks, Dermot. You know, those, um, those students who want to apply for a master's at UCLan, they have a, that scholarship, uh, That it, it's a course discount for every student that applies for a master's degree on campus at UCLan, that's available to everybody. Um, if you wanted to go and study a three-year degree at the University of Central Lancashire, or just even the final year, the top-up degree, it would probably cost you in terms of the qualification, the living, the travel, about 20,000 English pounds to go for one year to do a top-up degree. So 20,000 pounds is the fee you will pay for the the education, the accommodation, and the travel to you plan for one year to complete this top-up degree. So not only is it, is it a great offer, uh, it's also uh, excellent value. So please consider that, you know, this is great value. There's nothing, there's, there's no, we're not selling you anything short. You know, it's, it's a UK honors degree certificate. So please have a look at our website, have a look at, uh, all the things we've we've said about the program. The closing date is the 25th of February through our centres. So if you're interested in this, if you've studied at an NCC education centre or there's one nearby, go and talk to them about it. They will give you the price and they will manage the application process. If you're not near an NCC centre, please contact us through our website um, or we can we'll put an email address uh, Lynn, if you could just put your email address in the chat box. So if you're not located near an NCC education centre and you've had no relationship with one, um, please contact Lynn and through her email address and we'll put you in touch with somebody who can help you. Uh, just need to tell us where you're located. Um, but all in all, I would suggest going go to our centre and they will explain to you about the payment, the fees, and the application process. So there's Lynn's email address for any students who aren't located or connected to an NCC centre, please contact Lynn and, and we will deal with your application. You need to tell her where you're located. Um, in terms of course orientation, Dermot touched upon that, you know, so, so we need to have the applications all concluded by the 9th of March. Um, and then the course teaching is on the 14th of March. But remember that deadline date of the 25th. Um, Dermot, there was one question about if a student's completed the com level five computing, can they go on to the cybersecurity and networking? I think they may not have sufficient um, coverage of security 
modules there, but I would need to double check, Andrew. We, we, we're trying to offer distinct pathways at the moment. So the students typically do the level five deployment computing or deployment computing with business to come onto the information systems top up. In terms of the cybersecurity, they typically do the level four deployment computing, the level five diploma um, with computing with cybersecurity to make sure they get that base yeah, that base layer of security considerations and then move on to the top up. I think if you've done just a level five deployment computing, the jump to cyber security would be too much. So I think that, that would be so, my answer. But we can double check on that. I think I'd, I would, that would be my initial response. Yeah. OK, I think when students apply, if they're interested in one or both, they can put both down and then we can say which one they're eligible for. That OK, that's, that sounds fine. That sounds fine. OK. We, we will do that with the application if you tell us which ones you're interested in, which top ups, and then we will go, but we'll look at your application and we'll say which and the qualifications you have, whether you're applicable for both or just one of them. We've, okay. we've got to get these applications in on time as well. I think some, sometimes we get late applications, you know, on the rare occasion if it's one day or two days, but typically we, we, we want to set the students up to succeed. We don't want to say, oh, you've missed four weeks. We're going to take your money and chuck you on the platform and good luck. No, we, you know, we want to make sure we've got everything tidy in time and everyone can start with the orientation at the same time. So we try I, to work I, those deadlines as much as possible, Andrew. I, I, I think one of the worst experiences I've, I've had is turning up late to a course, you know, whether it's two or three days or a week yes. late. You know, it does you have just, an impact. It does have an impact, yeah. And, and we don't want anybody to fail here. You know, we want you to have the full experience and exposure to great UK lecturers, all the materials, and it just isn't the right starting point. So yeah. rather than coming one week or two weeks or three weeks late, you know, delay it to the next intake. It does feel painful. And really what that is, is a wake up call to you now, get everything in order. If yeah. you're a level five student and you're waiting for your certificate from NCC Education, don't worry about that. As long as you pass the programme, make the application and we will make the connection with your certificate if you haven't yet received it don't worry about that if you're an ncc student and you're waiting for your level five results so it'll be waiting for your winter results um you, you know we can make the connection there so that shouldn't stop you from applying uh, obviously those who are who are sitting exams in spring or in march you know that's going to be too late for this intake but it will be fine for the next intake, which is August, September time. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, Thanks, everyone. Some great questions today. Thank you very much. Someone's asked about scholarship. I think that the scholarship from UCLan is 10% discount. I was going to say about that. Yeah, yeah. It's 10%, but it's a very popular course. So if you're applying for September's master's programs, you need to be applying now because I know the course gets booked up um so you know just bear that in mind or you apply during whilst you're doing your your ba honors degree top up you apply halfway through that course for the masters so that will guarantee you a place because i know places are limited they're very popular uh the cyber security courses at uplan um just going through some of the other questions uh we have um Oh yes, Dermot mentioned um, about our own uh, master's uh, qualification. So when you complete this this UCLan top up, we have a po we have a level seven postgraduate diploma in business management. And if you take the the project and and systems units out of that, uh, they're they're both electives. Um, we have a collaboration with the university. Of, um, uh, uh, London Metropolitan University, and it's called an MSc in Information Technology. And it's quite nicely priced. So it's an online MSc. Um, it's 3,600, I think, from memory. They will give you, um, they will give you some exemption against units, but as an MSc in Information Technology, it's online, it's delivered by the university, and it's great value for money as well. So there's some progression after you've completed this this one of these two UCLan top ups. Are there any other questions? 
It's interesting, Andrew. We see more students from from a computing background coming in and doing some more business modules as well. Because I, I think the business, the, the industry now is looking for for, for some some hybrid skills. So, so students, I think this course is quite good. It's business and information technology, and it's the same with postgrad studies. So students really want to get a, a rounded knowledge of both disciplines. So the London Met one, I've just had a quick look on the website. It's, it's distance learning. Yeah, um, I can put the link in the chat for everybody, and they can have a please do. It's, I, you know, I think. Oh, it's three thousand two hundred. My apologies, um, but that that is that's fantastic value, um, and it's something, you know. So you're going to get a combination. So you've done the U plan, you've, you've done a level seven postgraduate diploma in business management, and there's this MSc in information technology. You know, some great qualifications there, and as Dermot says, is. You know, it's about the world we live in. It's not just about having IT skills. It's about having management, business, organizational skills. And it's about standing apart from the competition. And that's what we're providing here. And you don't even have to come to the UK. So there's no, doesn't matter what the COVID restrictions are, you can do this from your computer in your bedroom at home. You know, you don't have to travel anywhere. So accessible, so versatile. You know, these are all within reach. I'm not going to talk about the payment structure. Uh, you need to talk to our centres about that. Okay, uh, our centres have um, will will explain that all to you and how to make an application. Are there any other questions? Anything else, Tamsin, comes to mind for you, which we haven't really... Um... No, I'm just having a look at a couple of the questions here. I, I know that there's quite a few students on here from um, SNIT Business School in Mauritius, and Tarab is obviously on the call today, um, who heads up those students. So afterwards, Tarab, I see there's quite some specific questions you've been asking. We can always have a discussion um, afterwards. Just give me a call, give me a shout, and I can run through your queries case by case, not a problem. Yeah, and you know, Bernard just entered a, a question in the box about he completed an NCC qualification some time ago. I think my suggestion to Bernard is make an application, explain that you're interested in the cyber security and also put in that application any other qualifications. You know, a lot's happened in the IT and computing world since 2004. Um, let us have a look and see what you've been doing um and put all the information capture it in an application form and then we will come back to you and say whether you're eligible or not okay and that's really important you know when you do apply put all of the information in there uh if you you know obviously i assume bernard's been in the it industry um so we will consider that on a case-by-case -case basis well, what we'll do, we'll send out the link to this presentation um, and in that email, if you've got any more questions or anything you're not sure about, please respond to the sender and we'll get those answers uh, back to you. Or go and talk to your nearest NCC Education Centre uh, and hopefully they can uh, provide all the answers you need. Um, OK, Here's, well, that's goodbye from me. Yes, and goodbye for myself. It was wonderful to speak to everybody today. And I see there's a lot of good positive comments coming through. So any other questions, as I've said, you're more than welcome to contact your business development manager or your local centre to ask more. Uh, but it's been wonderful being able to share the knowledge here today with you and looking forward to seeing you all register and join the programme. Thanks, guys. Great, great questions. Great session. Thanks for putting it on. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Thomas, and Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.